All right, Hustling Agent, today we have a special treat with Mr. Grant Wise from Whitley. Grant, I've known for about, what is it, seven years? I think it was my first real estate, my first real estate event I ever went to, and I got to meet Grant. Grant, why don't you tell everybody what you do, what Whitley does uh, for somebody that has never heard of you, for somebody who's been sleeping under a rock? (laughs) <laughs> uh so somebody that hasn't seen my facebook ads every day for the last decade okay yeah. so uh yeah thanks again for having me out here brother i appreciate it um so what whitley does whitley runs your ads whitley sets your appointments and you just close more deals at, like in its simplest form we do lead generation we do remarketing and we do lead follow-up to set appointments for agents and um having just an enormous amount of success uh, with the people, and I'm sure we'll kind of talk about like how we're doing it. Uh, w- me, myself, got started back in 2013, 14, teaching agents how to do Facebook ads. And it is the only thing I have done since that time. I haven't done anything else coming into my wow. 10th year of teaching real estate agents how to do Facebook ads or just doing it for them. And I have short story, like got into the, got into training and built a company. We had like 1,600, 1,700 people go through our training program and then turn that into a software where we could just do all the ad work for them and teaching people our process, just lead generating, then doing remarketing and then appointment setting and just how all of that stuff flows together. It's you know resulted in over 4,000 companies I've consulted for. We work wow. for 450, I think, different companies today doing awesome. lead generation remarketing and follow-up work. I've been on all the stages at Inman and NAR. I uh, got asked to speak at Gary Vee's event, Agent 2021, a couple of years ago. I used cool. to have a show on Grant Cardone's network. Just been all around the real estate world teaching people this process for the last decade and uh, have, have helped sell billions of dollars of real estate as a result. No doubt. like that. Grant was the first person that I had ever heard of when I got into just the curiosity level, the very first level about doing Facebook ads, right? And uh, even though, you know, I may have not been a client at the time, I am now very happy. I love Whitley, we use it every day. Uh, even though I wasn't a client back then, you just, you still taught me something just for being on all those things that you talked about. So I'm, I'm thankful for that, man. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and I think, dude, like, Whitley is pretty groundbreaking, don't you? I mean, is that how you would describe it? Like, that's how I describe it. I, um, I'm i grateful that you describe it that way because I think people think I was a douchebag if I described it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and people know that I'm a douchebag, so I'm safe, right? <laughs> well, it's just because, like, it's, it was my idea, so, like, I always hesitate sometimes to throw out the, oh, it's innovative and it's disruptive. Like, at the end of the day, it's a, it's just a really simple tool that took a, it's a really simple tool that like just does something really complex. Like Facebook ads is a pretty complex process when you get in there and you start learning how to do it. If you don't, especially today, if you don't know what's going on, totally. it's, it's just a near impossibility to get it in there and understand how to get leads and how to do all this stuff. And so we just took a really complex process. And we broke it down into a few really simple steps and we built a tool that just does the work for people. So I, I appreciate you believing it is groundbreaking. It means a lot to me. It really does. Um, but I think in the real- like in reality, we just took a process that existed manually and we kind of sassified it. We built a software that would just do it for people. Sure. And that makes it really easy for people now to get leads or to do remarketing with our remarketing integration. With Lead Assist, we can do the follow-up and we can actually do appointment setting. And so we just took this like crazy complexity of acquiring customers and, and tried to oversimplify it and I think, you know, like if you give it started in the social ad space in your first experiences, Whitley, it kind of spoils you. Cause then if you go try to learn how to do it on your own, you're like, yeah, wait a second. What is this? <laughs> you right. So it's, I, I really do appreciate the kind words. I, I hesitate to throw out the, the disruptive or the innovative. I think all we really did is we took a really complex process and we really made it very simple so that anybody could do it. And that shortens people's timeline to getting results, which can be really impactful. Which is how you keep people happy, right? Especially in your business. So I have just a kind of a curious question I've been meaning to ask you. Do you have a lot of clients outside of the real estate space who are using the software? 
No, and, and it was actually a very intentional decision of mine. Um, oh, I've, wow. had a, I've had a lot of people ask me to go outside of the space. Um, but I, I've made the decision up to this point to stay in the real estate space. Now, we service what we call the real estate profession. So if you're a lender, title rep, investor, sure. you know, if you're something that touches real estate, uh, we're, we're certainly you know, an option. But we've made the decision, I've made the decision up to this point to stay just exclusively in this space. Um, I would say it's probably going to be the case for another couple of years, but um, you know, currently, no, no short-term plans to venture out of it. I get requests for it all the time. But yeah, well, I'm sure you have a good reason. Um, <laughs> so, I, so we won't even go there as far as what I think. But um, so, like, let's talk about selfishly. Let's talk about so Facebook leads. You guys are still generating tons of leads for people yeah. what have you no so back in the day when i got started in facebook leads i was thinking i was generating seller leads by giving home valuations right and um it was a common strategy and everyone said it was a brand new hot new thing and i think it worked for some and a lot of people myself especially wasn't good at the rest of it Right, as far as follow up or actually writing good copy, we thought we could put a landing page online and get a bunch of listings. Um, so, and same with like buyers, like the home buyer lists, right? Like that, like those used to work super well too. How, but since then, it has maybe not as much, maybe more consumers are used to it now, right? So, what have you seen on the changes of the, the Facebook lead space in real estate? last couple of years when we're if we're talking about just lead generation yeah just um, lead generation for right now because we'll go into the remarketing for sure so if it's just lead generation we actually have been running the exact same ad for the last decade <laughs> in every market we work in it's never it's it's almost like exclusively never changed um there's, there's different things that have changed about Facebook, but one of the reasons that this works so consistently, like the buyer list, you're talking about homes list or running an individual listing ad, we're still getting leads for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars a lead using these strategies. And the reason that they will work forever is because it leverages the single desire, the like almost exclusive desire of people that are interested in buying and or selling a home, which is looking at the like properties to look at. This is the reason that Zillow even became so successful is all they did. You know, if you go back decades ago, you know, maybe not that long ago, but you go back to 2007, 2006. Yeah. Yeah. We, we used to have no mechanism for giving people a list of properties. So they had to go meet a broker and agent. Then the newspapers, then the MLSs, then these different platforms came out and it kind of like revolutionized how we were able to communicate what was available to people. And the thing that has never changed literally in decades is people's desire to look at available properties. And this is why the strategy has worked for, the, for us for the last nine years. And it's why it's going to work no matter the medium. If I was running a radio ad, if I was putting out a billboard, if I was doing whatever, it would be, um, you know, sacramentohomeslist.com wherever. And that thing would generate leads every single place that you put it because it leverages the single desire that people have, which is to look at more properties. So when it comes to lead generation, the things about Facebook that have changed are we used to do landing pages and then Facebook introduced lead forms. After about a year and a year and a half, they finally got true adoption, meaning the Facebook user was finally accustomed to what lead forms were. And so landing pages became less effective, lead pages, lead forms became much more effective. And then they introduced a special housing category and then yes. they eliminated terms. They're getting ready to eliminate special ad audiences. Like there's, there's, they're always making changes, but the, the cool thing, once you figure out like the thing that people want, the lead magnet is it, it's probably not going to change source to source to source. You could do that same thing on Google. You could do it on YouTube. You could do it on LinkedIn. You could do it on TikTok. You could do it on a billboard. You could do it on a radio. It's going to work because it leverages the number one desire that people have, which is to look at property. So we call this the Zillow method. It's just taking the listings that you have and making them available so people can look at them. And we're still getting, like I said, a dollar uh, leads, dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars a lead. People that are opting in, 
because they want to look at properties that are available in the market. So for us, it actually hasn't changed a whole lot. And 52% of people that opt in to like a list, you know, look at a list of homes or look at an individual listing also have a property to sell statistically speaking, which means we don't typically advocate people run a seller ad because you're going to pay 12, 18, 24, $36 lead when you could just be getting leads for three, four, five dollars lead, knowing every one of every two leads is probably a seller anyway. So our strategy is is actually never been to to run much on the seller side. Um, that's what we're doing to this day to to continue to get leads. And it's the same thing that we've been doing for the last near decade. So let me ask you, because I know you tried this. So do you think for real estate leads that the list of homes is the best lead magnet out there. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's not even a question. So not like this is a selfish question. Once again, what okay. if you like like? So I have a podcast too, so I can get people that are smarter than me yeah, on right? and ask the and, questions. <laughs> yes, and you had me on, which I appreciated and, and had a great time. So, um, um, a lot of, I mean. And a lot of people try and do the seller reports. Have you ever seen that shit like really work? It works. It's just a really high cost per lead. Because I mean, if you think about it, if you look at like COVID as an example, during COVID, there was a six to one buy sell ratio, six buyers for every one seller, which means there's a smaller pool of people that were interested in selling their property. Okay. That's just black and white fact. Now, if you look at the seller report, there is a small percentage of people that want to sell their home that have any interest in a seller report, a seller guide, knowing how to sell their home, those different types of things. So you just have to realize like you can run the ad, your cost, the, the pool of people that you're going after is smaller, which means that your cost per lead is going to be substantially higher. That doesn't necessarily uh, mean that your conversion rate is going to be higher. It just means that your cost for lead is going to be higher. And so when we're analyzing marketing campaigns and we're looking at performance, we want to pay attention to some of the key factors that put us in front of the biggest pool of opportunity. So like a little hack, the reason, uh, I don't know if I want to get this way, the reason that our <laughs> homes are you know, the reason that our um, list type advertisements consistently por- perform so well is because we use the median price point in every single market. So if I came into your market, I would say, tell me what the median price point in the last 90 days is. Not the average, the median. And you would tell me it's whatever, 697. Okay, well, then I'm going to create a homes list under 697 or between 500 and 700 or between 600 and 750. And I'm going to get leads all day long because that's where most of the action is happening in the market, which is why our cost per lead continuously just stays so low. It's because we're consistently swimming in the ponds with the most available fish, if that makes any sense. And so yeah. it's not that these strategies don't work. It's just people have to recognize you're, you're, you're swimming in a much smaller pond of opportunity, which is going to translate to lower amounts of leads, higher lead costs. But it doesn't always equate on the back end that just because you paid $50 for a lead means you're going to convert more of them. (laughs) It just means that you paid $50 for a lead. Now you have to do all the same amount of work on the back end to try to convert them. Dude, that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense. And listeners, like just so you just so you understand, right? Like the purpose of these campaigns is to generate leads, right? Like the conversion is something totally else. Yes, but the purpose of this is to generate leads, and you know, like a, a lead magnet for our viewers and listeners who don't know is something that you put out there that encourages a consumer to give you their email and their phone number, right? So, like, that's what the purpose of this campaign is. And I think, even personally, like, you know, I should know more about it, but it's always, you know, learning that stuff too. So, so good. So. We got the lead generation piece kind of covered. Let's talk about remarketing. So let me mm-hmm. tell everybody a funny story. As I was at, uh, as I thought I was smart, is um, we were at uh, the Cheplak event last year in Tahoe, last September. Right now it's September. It may have been the same day last year. Shit. Um, basically, you're but, yeah, basically last year. And, um, 
I was up there talking about remarketing leads. And the way that I looked at it was really cumbersome. You're getting the data out, putting it in, you know, holding it together with duct tape and scotch tape and like <laughs> shoestrings and making it work. Um, you solve that with Whitley. But to go even deeper, like let's talk about remarketing, right? Is what is the best way to remarket? Or tell me about the remarketing and the best way to use it in like buyer seller lead gen. So the remar remarketing for anybody that doesn't know, it's simply just marketing to somebody over and over and over again. It's kind of like when you go to Amazon to buy a product, you decide not to, and then you go back to Facebook and that product's right there in your newsfeed. That's dynamic remarketing. So when you're generating leads, this little thing right here can increase your conversion rate two to 300%. What you do is you just take a piece of video content that you create that is not just like generic content, it's content that's actually designed to speak to the lead that you just generated. So it's not seen by everybody, it's only seen by the leads you're generating. When a lead comes into your database, you immediately start marketing to those people uh, through ads that you set up that allow you to build a relationship with the person. So a lead comes into the database, now all of a sudden, every time they go back to Facebook, Instagram, or anywhere within the audience network, which, oh, by the way, it's like 3 million plus sites globally, you are what they see. They see videos of you talking. They see videos of your past clients talking. They see you nonstop. So if we go back to sales funnel, some people say it's top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. I always say awareness, um, discovery, decision. So people go from awareness, which is lead generation. Now they're in the discovery phase. They're trying to discover who it is that they actually want to work with uh, and have represent them from an agency standpoint. So you're paying right now, um, Sunit, I think it's like three pennies. I think you're paying three or four cents. I'd have to go back and look at some of the stats to get somebody to watch 15 seconds of that one video. So imagine, if you will, like if you generate a buyer or a seller that has expressed interest in, in doing business with you via becoming a lead, now you're getting them to watch for three pennies. You're getting them to watch at least 15 seconds of a video that you created just for them to see. Whether that's an introductory video, it's an educational video, it's a testimonial video, we encourage you to put you know, a few pieces of content out there that they can see. But this, this allows you to build a relationship with the leads that you're generating instantaneously. They don't have to pick up the phone, they don't have to be texting anybody, and they don't have to open the emails. And oh, by the way, they're probably not. They're probably not. Because because they haven't built a relationship with you yet, but now every single time that they go back to social media, they're seeing these videos that you've intentionally put up for them to see that are being targeted to them in advertisements. What you were talking about as far as like how you guys used to do it, like the process for remarketing today, if you don't have things set up on your site and because of Facebook's loss when it comes to tracking with the iOS update, Google's getting ready to sure, add yeah. some, there's a few things. If you're not using first party data, it actually is becoming increasingly difficult to do remarketing. First party data, meaning the name, email, phone number. And so like the old way of doing this was you would download a CSV file from your database. You would upload it into Facebook as a custom audience. You would set the ad to target the new audience. Well, that's good for today. But if you get another lead in an hour, your data yeah. is out of date. Yeah. <laughs> so what people were doing is like once a week, and I don't know if this is your process, but most people like once a it week are pulling a CSV annoying. file, uploading it. Well, the problem with this is optimization when it comes to advertising. So when you launch an ad, the algorithm is starting to optimize it. If you stop it, it messes it up. If you change the budget too high, too low, it messes it up. If you change the audience, it messes it up. So any change that you put in place to your ad can really affect its performance. So every time you're stopping and starting an advertisement to update the audiences, it uh, causes a lot of problems. So we built this thing called our remarketing integration. So we integrate with CRM platforms and we do something called uh, contact mirroring or list mirroring. So if you have list A, which is like your new lead list, we are mirroring that data in Whitley and then we're building an audience for you in Facebook. So if you take a lead off the new lead list and put them in the you know past client list, Whitley reads that data and it updates the custom audience inside of Facebook. So now it's dynamically only showing those videos that we're telling you to create and promote to those people to the actual leads that are being generated. It's just really cool because you can get really segmented in how you could do it. You could be 
uh, creating community content maybe and sending it to the whole database. You could be ask, you could create a video asking for referrals and send it to your past clients. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You can get really granular, but it's all automated now because of our remarketing integration. So you don't have to like manually pull out a CSV file and update it and do these, these different types of things. Dude, that's groundbreaking. That's what I was talking about. And yeah. let's talk more about this after a quick break. So now we're taking a break and we'll fucking pitch the link <laughs> to, to the affiliate and do something else. Um, so, bef so before we were talking about remarketing and kind of the breakthrough thing that you guys process, you guys did with, with Whitley, which I also think is important because for me is I spend millions of dollars a year on a year on leads between flex and everything else. Right. Maybe two mil a lot. It's probably more if I look, so I'm not going to look, but, um, and you know, like that first opportunity is huge. So what I always thought was we get a lot of Zillow leads. So I'm going to use Zillow as an example, a lead comes in from Zillow. They land in my CRM. They're playing on their phone anyways. They go check out Facebook or Instagram because that's the internet now, right? So that's what they check out. Then they see my face, right? So with Whitley and that real-time integration that you're talking about, like that shit is bonkers because you can really be right there right away. Yeah. it's And, and it's so crucial too because like we talk – often about in the past we have about speed elite right how it's so important and it used to take eight to 12 touch points before somebody was ready to do a deal with you now it takes eight to 12 touch points just to, for somebody to want to talk to you which is yeah substantially harder right so how do you do that if they're not immediately answering your phone calls responding to your texts, or opening your emails when they go right back to social media and all of a sudden they're seeing your face instantaneously um, it's really powerful because we go from speed to lead, the speed to lead concept to speed to relationship. So if we can instantly start building a relationship with somebody, the second they come back to social media because they opted in to any one of these lead sources, it doesn't matter if it's Zillow, if it's Wilopo, if it's Realtor.com, it's Boomtown, Bold Leads, uh, Facebook, like it doesn't matter what it is. As soon as they come in, now they're seeing content from you and they're starting to build a relationship with you. That's what translates to people answering the phone again responding to the text again, opening the emails again, because that counts as a touch point. And you have uh, leads, varying lead sources have varying timelines, right? People say sure. that Facebook is a longer timeline. It's actually not that true. We're getting our average um, time to get an agent an appointment right now is 25 days from starting Facebook ads. So oh, it's, great. Yeah. It's actually not as much as people think. Um, but these different lead sources have varying degrees of timelines as far as when people will be ready. So you're, there's, there's like literally nothing that you can do, Sunit, to pay three pennies and show your face to somebody every single day until they are ready to buy, whether that's in 12 days or it's in 12 months or it's in 12 sure. years. And I make that joke about people seeing my Facebook ads for the last nine years. I've spent money intentionally. So if you've seen me one time on Facebook, I want you to see me every time you come back to Facebook. And that's how we were even able to become, or at least I as a personal brand was able to build up a reputation because people saw me every time they went back to social media. Yeah. I was there talking about something specific to Facebook ads. And so it, this isn't just a, pra a process that like we help people implement. It's what we practice too. Sure. Yeah. Because it's so f effective. Like it's, it's absolutely, I'm, I'm not seeing anything uh, as effective as, as doing this. So for the remarketing, and I mean, it's something else that I see too, is, right? I, I pay for billboards. Let me tell you, for our viewers and listeners, those fuckers are expensive. <laughs> okay? Like, just FYI, they are expensive. But when you're remarketing to your database, like, imagine your database as your own special freeway of everybody who wants to be there, who came in for a reason. And if they see your ad, like, you are winning in that situation uh for remarketing too, uh pixel fires on the search site right is that included in the same list it can in that be same audience i mean yeah, do you be. tell people that they should have the pixel fires added to the same audience different audience or what um so if somebody visits your website and it fires yeah. the facebook pixel yes it's becoming more and more difficult because of 
you got all these power players that are power playing, right? So Apple, as an example, with the iOS update, basically cut the Facebook pixel. Google is likely going to be doing the same thing. Um, you have a lot of these big institutions that are making it a little bit more difficult to track Facebook's data off quite a bit. So we had even Facebook on their site says, <laughs> have this in place and then also have this in place. Like there's anything that you can have to try to grab somebody from like a tracking standpoint, you should. So yes, have the Facebook pixel in place on all the landing pages or websites that you send people to because you can build a remarketing audience of people that visit that page. And then you can remarket them as well with the re video content we're talking about. So I just add them to the same ad campaign. Is that okay? Is it just yeah. with a, just another audience? And then how about like remarketing to your Instagram page and your Facebook page? Like, should you do? Yeah. Cause I think it's important because when you go put out, when you go put out content, especially if you're a business page, you're only like three to 4% of the people that follow you are actually seeing the content because yeah. Facebook wants you to pay. So if you have Instagram traffic coming in or page likes or followers, Facebook actually wants you to pay a little bit of money to share your content to that whole list of people. So it's actually a really good idea to create remarketing audiences of your pages too, because then when you put out a piece of content, it ensures that everybody in the audience is going to see it. Cause we're a, uh, you know, we're like a, in real estate, it's like a frequency culture, right? Like put a video out every single day. And while I think that's important, <laughs> that's what, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Like it's important, but you have to remember six to 7%, three to 4%. Like these are the metrics as far as how many people are actually going to see it because Facebook wants you to spend a little bit of money boosting a post to make sure that they show it to everybody that even follows you. Um, so definitely create the audiences, um, now, some, you know, some audiences could see some videos and some audiences could, could see others because there's going to be content that's not relevant. Like you don't want your past clients to see a video of you talking about buying a home with an adjustable rate mortgage, right? It wouldn't make any sense today because sure. maybe they just bought. So you want to be a little bit um, organized in how you're doing follow-up as far as like what videos you're targeting to which audiences. But you absolutely should have tracking in place so that these audiences are ever growing. Um, as especially with the changes that Facebook continues to make as a result of HUD. Uh, again, just so everybody knows, like they're about to eliminate special ad lookalike audiences. Yeah, um, I saw that. Yeah. So just um, important stuff to be looking out for. Isn't that bad for coaching too? Weren't we talking about that? Like, cause that's, so real estate coaching space and ad well, is special housing category, right? Correct. It, it, it does make it difficult because they lump most coaches, consultants, people that sell products to the real estate industry. They make, they, they like stick them in the special housing category, even though they are not a part of the special housing category. So by eliminating it, there's speculation that, you know, obviously it could have a negative impact, but there's speculation on the flip side of that. They could remove the special housing category altogether because the algorithm has learned what it needs to learn. I mean, there's a lot of theories out there. We never know until Facebook actually takes yeah. the action. But the only thing that we do know is they're deprecating special ad audiences. So we've got to be a little bit more strategic. This is why I always go back to list building first, getting as many yeah. names, email addresses, and phone numbers as you can add it to your database because you don't want to build a business based on what success you've had with one company and then they make a change and it throws everything else off and you lead haven't gen. been list building. Lead generation is the most important thing. When you have a database of 25,000, 35,000, 45,000 people, you care a lot less <laughs> about what these other companies do because that's owned media. We can talk to those people every single day for free through emails and text campaigns and you know all the other marketing methods that are available. So advertising really is meant initially to pull contacts in Remarketing is meant to enhance the relationship you're able to build with those people, but you, you, the mechanism could change. Like, you know, we didn't even have remarketing 10 years ago. Like it wasn't sure. something that was re even necessary. You could run Facebook ads in 2014 and like get, you sell a house like every 20 leads you get. It was really easy. Sure. But things, things always change. Things always evolve. You just got to stay educated on what the changes are, how they impact you. But list building will never fail you. Like we've built contact list up to 70 80,000 people and when something changes where we're getting traffic 
it, we're safer because we have media that we can talk to every day. Um, so, Russell Brunson, right? We were talking about it prior to the call. He's all about making that list. All about yes. it. Number one. I'm working on the, yes, the list. I'm working on so many lists right now, man. Like constantly, all the lists, yes. segments, all, the lists. all that shit. Um, so for the remarketing. And we were talking about, you know, branding and testimonials. Mm -hmm. How about more houses and the remarketing? Well, what I always like to tell you is that information wins you opportunity and relationship will win you the business. Mm. The relationships are what this is like as a, like this is a relationship based industry it's a relation you're in a relationship based business once you get a lead um and i've heard um you know frank kern the frank kerns of the world like once you get a lead from let's say it's a list of properties if you keep sending that person li like list of properties to download, you're basically buying leads multiple times. Where the real money is made is when you're building a relationship, creating a connection with that mm. person. Because I don't need to pay to continue to show you properties, especially if you already set up on a home search. I can just push you properties every day through text, through email, through push notifications if you have an app, those different types of things. And so there I believe is value to um, creating home search experiences. But once you have acquired a lead, well, it's more the relationship that you build with that lead as far as like value in your conversion rates. So, I, I mean, we work with so many people in this industry who are getting leads and their conversion rate is less than 0.8%, which is the industry average, which is already really, really, really low. Um, and we snap remarketing in place and then boom, all of a sudden now they're converting twice, three times as much as they were, but it's because we were building a relationship. That was the focus. We were building a relationship with that person as opposed to just sending them more and more information. Cause when somebody goes through discovery, um, the discovery phase of uh, a sales funnel, it's about the connection that they're making with an agent who they want to represent them, whether it comes to buying or selling a home, it's about the connection that they're, they're, they're building with those people. So I believe information will win you opportunity. So use it to win you opportunities, which is names, emails, phone numbers, leads, and then the relationships, what's going to win you the business. So use your branded content, your video stuff to then remarket them to build a relationship. Dude, that was so insightful. Absolutely. I like the way that you, that you said that. Is that the best part about doing these podcasts? Is even though we talk all the time, I just learned like your perspective. I guess I knew it, but it was really good just to hear it again. Good, For sure, man. I appreciate. So it. I think so. Like people need to listen, right? Like what Grant is saying, and you know, you talked about Frank Kern, and as you're saying that, I'm like module two, mass conversion. <laughs> he talks about that. Yes, I may be a freak about that stuff, but um, yeah, instead of the more houses, like more value. So. In mass conversion, he's saying, you know, once you get the lead, part of the lead magnet, like your next couple of emails to them should be more practical training on the lead magnet. Mm -hmm. Like, so if somebody, like, if I sent somebody a list of houses, maybe my first video would be, you know, um, here's a list of houses, you know, like, what's important when selecting where you're going to live? Right. Stuff like that. Right. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah like, and then at the bottom, it, do you want to schedule another time to, to talk and discuss this further? Right. I mean, that's it. hundred percent. Like people underestimate, cause if you sit down and break down, okay, what does somebody look for when they're going to buy a home? Well, they look at the uh, area where they're going to buy. And then once they've decided on where they want to live, then they want to know what are the school districts like? What are the community parks like? What are the restaurants like? And so your 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 remarketing brain should be, which school administrators could I go interview? Which parks could I go do videos at? Oh, yeah. Which restaurants could I go highlight? Especially when you talk to need about farming, which obviously so many people in this industry are accustomed to doing. Well, if you're going to farm an area, it's not just about the houses; it's about the the surrounding features. Uh, of that house, whether it's the Starbucks or it's the local coffee shop or it's the nice restaurant or it's the, you see what I'm saying? And so 
um, people need to think about once they have a list of properties, um, then what are just like the features around the property that they could go do, you know, business highlight videos, interviews, take their kid to the local park and video. Like it's just simple stuff like that because like, they do it where they want to live, then it's like, okay, tell me about the area. This is why people get so much business from YouTube and the videos are literally just videos about the area. It's because people want to know, okay, I want to buy a house here. What's the restaurant going to be like? What's the dog park situation? What's the situation? Dude, so good. We went really long. We can keep going, <laughs> I, I think, for hours. So uh, just to wrap up, what is some advice you have for one of our typical listeners is, you know, solo agent, small team, uh, North America. What advice do you have for for these for this group? Uh, man, that's a really good question. You know, specific to Facebook advertising, it would specific be specific to whatever you you think that's relevant. Yeah, it it would probably be like we know today. This is a three step process. Okay, you're getting leads in the business, check. Most people are actually doing that. It's then you're remarketing those leads with content that adds value to them, helps you create a connection. So that's step two. Then it's follow-up. Your calls, your texts, your emails. If you're doing all of this stuff right, what we're seeing right now, Sunita, and what we're doing is an average 58% conversation rate, and this is on 100 leads, that means we're talking to 58 of 100 of the people that opted in. We're seeing a 17% qualification rate. We're seeing a 40% appointment rate and a, and a 50% conversion rate, which means Great. for most of you, that means you're converting two to three out of those 100 leads into transactions. If your average cost to get 100 leads is 500 bucks or 800 bucks, and then your average commission check is six, seven, eight, nine, 10 grand, obviously the return on ad spend, ad spend is six, seven, eight, nine, 10 X. If you, if you do it the way that I just described, step one, get leads, step two, remarket the leads, step three, follow up, and you build systems and processes around that, you can really build a machine in your business that is super predictable. What I love about this is that step one, lead, step two, remarketing, step three, follow up, those are principles. So even if you replace the lead source, Facebook with Zillow, MyLopo, Filter.com, Boomtown, Bold Leads, Steps two, three, remarketing and follow-up, those become infrastructure that you have built to where you can handle any lead source. So if you're struggling or you're trying to get the team off the ground and you just need opportunities, Facebook is one of the lowest cost forms of opportunity you can provide people. And you should be able to convert one to three percent of the leads you're generating month one into customers, which is not what most people are accustomed to hearing with Facebook. And then that gives you some infrastructure where you can then go start adding other lead sources. Uh, that that you can start converting from. So I, I don't know if that was helpful or impactful or not, but just totally, the yes. biggest thing is remember it's a process. It's not an event. You can't just generate a lead and magically have money. So you've got yes, to you can. Focus, Trust me. Focus on building. I used the, to think that. <laughs> focus um, on building so, the other two out, and you're going to win big. Yeah. So if you guys want more information, Whitley, go to thehustlingagent.com, and on my last page. There is my special link to use. Grant, if people want to get a hold of you or ask you any questions, what should they do? Hit, hit Sunit's link. That'll connect you right in with our team. There's a live chat right on the site. You can connect with us. Um, the easiest way to get in touch with them. All right, guys. Well, Grant, I'll see you. What Today is Wednesday. When are you flying into Cali? Saturday. Two days. Two Saturday. Days. Yeah, I'll be there oh, yeah, Saturday doing the hike. Going on the hike. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, so I'll see you Sunday afternoon, and then Monday we'll both be with our coach and friends. A big event, the Chef Black Tahoe Mastermind. Yeah. So it should be a good one this year. We'll see you then. Thanks, brother. All right. Thank you.